Welcome back to Recap in Minutes. In today's video, we will be going through a 2010 fantasy action movie called Clash of the Titans. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins at a time when Zeus and his brothers gain victory over the Titans. With the help of Hades' creation, the Kraken, they are able to rid themselves of the Titans, thereby becoming the most powerful gods themselves. Zeus is given dominion over the heavens of Mount Olympus, Poseidon, the seas in Hades, the underworld. Following this, Zeus creates man with the purpose of feeding and maintaining the gods' immortality with the human's prayers. However, over time, man begins to question the gods, and this leads to a revolt against Zeus and the other gods. It is in this world that Perseus is born. He and his dead mother are found in a box floating in the sea by Spyros, a fisherman. Unknown to them, a mysterious woman watches from afar as Spyros carries the infant on board and takes him as his own. A few years later, a protein Perseus, Spyros, and Ormara, the fisherman's wife, take refuge in a cave as they wait out a storm. Perseus is sad because Marmara is expecting, which makes him remember that he has no parents. Spyros tells him that he will always be their son. He also tells Perseus that although he never really understands the motive of the gods, he knows that Perseus was born for greatness. Twelve years later, Perseus and his family go fishing, but they are disappointed with the day's catch. Spyros is especially displeased and blames the gods for not helping them in this time of need. Meanwhile, they take everything they want from the humans. Marmara tries to tell him that these trying times are caused by those who have revolted against the gods but Spyros is too inconsolable to listen. He is tired of being given scraps despite still being asked for all the gods' love. He cannot wait for someone to put an end to this cycle. Later that night, Perseus watches the stormy seas as his mother and sister sleeps, yearning for something while feeling it is hard. Spyros sees this and tells his son that he wished he had the answers to the questions Perseus had. Perseus, however, tells him he has everything that he could ever want, his family. The next day, they approach the statue of Zeus at Argos. Immediately, they realize that there is something askew and they are right. They have arrived at Argos just as Argon soldiers were completing their discretion of the great statue by knocking it into the sea. This causes Hades and his furies to attack the soldiers and everything nearby. Perseus and his family are not spared from this onslaught. Hades wrecks their ship and despite his best efforts to save them. Perseus loses his entire family as they are caught in the wreckage underwater. Meanwhile, Zeus holds court with the other gods on Mount Olympus. He is incensed at the situation at hand. He cannot believe they reward his love with such defiance. Hades chides Zeus for being too soft on the humans. He proposes that they must teach the humans a lesson for their insolence. Zeus agrees, unleashing Hades on the humans. Back on Earth, Soldiers take the shipwrecked Perseus to the Argon Palace, where King Cepheus and Queen Cassiopeia are celebrating their shallow victory over Zeus. Their daughter, Princess Andromeda, chastises them for celebrating their victory, while ignoring the peril they bring to their people by defying the gods. This falls on deaf ears and her mother even declares they do not need the gods as they are capable of ruling themselves and creating beauty. Beauty like the princess who she proclaims is more beautiful than the goddess of love and beauty, Aphrodite. King Cepheus tries to reel her in, but it is late. Hades appears in a fiery gust of wind and kills most of the soldiers in court before killing the queen. Following this, he sets an ultimatum for the people of Argos. In ten days, there shall be an eclipse of the sun. If Argos does not offer Andromeda as sacrifice to the gods as penance for their impudence, he shall unleash full destructive force of the Kraken on the city. Before he leaves, he informs the shell-shocked denizens that Zeus is Perseus' father. At Olympus, one of the gods tells Zeus about Perseus, a demigod in Argos who is his son. Zeus is initially skeptical that he has another son in Argos before writing him off as another mortal who does not pray to him. Back at Argos, Perseus is aggressively interrogated by Draco, the captain of the royal guard who despises the fact that Perseus is linked to the gods by blood before the king stops him. He appeals to Perseus to help him save his daughter from the gods, but Perseus does not even believe he is a demigod. Moreover, some even whisper that they should give in to Hades' demands. In the Kerfuffle, Perseus is imprisoned by the guards. While under custody, Perseus is visited by the mysterious woman who watched as Spyros rescued him from the sea at an infant. She reveals herself to bite Eo, a woman who is cursed by a god after refusing his sexual advances. She also confirms that he is indeed the son of Zeus 
After King Acrisius led a siege on Olympus in defiance to the authority of the gods, Zeus impersonated him in order to impregnate his wife, Dean. When the king discovered this treachery, he is driven to insanity. He kills his wife before sealing the infant Perseus in her coffin with the purpose of launching them into the sea. Just as he is about to, Zeus strikes him with lightning, deforming him severely. Being a demigod, Perseus survived in order to carry out his life's purpose to kill the Kraken. Although he could care less about this, he agrees to kill the Kraken because its death means he can get his hands on a weakened Hades, the god who killed his family. In the next scene, Eo tells Draco they must get the advice of the Stygian witches. Draco wants none of her help. The soldiers prepare to head out on the quest, but morale is low because killing the Kraken is a suicide mission. As they leave the city, two hunters join the posse on their mission. Meanwhile, Hades finds the former king Acrisius dwelling in a cave, now living as the deformed Kalibos. He informs him that Perseus is still alive and that he had killed his wife for nothing. Not wanting Zeus to detect his still-growing power, Hades recruits Kalibos to intercept Perseus' mission, and in return he will kill Zeus for Kalibos. In the next scene, soldiers make camp in the woods. Draco tries to train Perseus, with the sword seeing that he has been a fisherman his whole life, but Perseus proves to be more than adept with the weapon, as he is blessed with godly powers. Later on, Perseus finds an enchanted sword in the forest, a gift from Zeus. Perseus rejects this as he wants to do the mission as a man. He gives the sword to Draco before wandering off. Deep in the woods, he encounters a herd of Pegasus, more gifts from Zeus. Shortly after, Kalibos attacks the soldiers, killing one or two before biting Perseus and escaping into a desert after Draco chops of his hand. The blood conjures a host of giant scorpions, which attack the men and almost kills them off before they are saved by a group of djinn. As Perseus tries to thank them, he is attacked by poison from Kalipo's bite. Draco tells him to pray to his father, but he refuses. Meanwhile, back at Argos, the princess witnesses a Procopian, a doomsday prophet, urges the people to obey Hades and sacrifice Andromeda. Back in the desert, the soldiers express their distrust for the djinn. However, the djinn heals Perseus and tells them they must work together because they too also need salvation from the gods. Meanwhile, Draco is upset that his men are dying on this mission. He urges Perseus to take the weapon given by Zeus and use the gods' help, but Perseus refuses once more. Draco keeps it for him. The soldiers then ride the scorpions under the djinn's control to make up for lost time. The band arrive at the witches' caves. Eo warns Perseus to only ask the witches for what they need nothing else. In the cave, the witches try to trick the band and kill one of the soldiers but Perseus steals the eye they share and this forces them to reveal that the only way to kill the Kraken is to use Medusa the Gorgon's head to turn it into stone. They also reveal that Perseus will die on this mission. On the way to Medusa's cave in the underworld, Perseus is visited by Zeus who urges him to abandon this mission and join him in Olympus to live as a god. Perseus turns him down and says he'd rather die as a man. Zeus, impressed by his gumption, gives him a gold coin. At the mouth of the underworld, the hunters give Perseus a shield made of the scorpion's shell before departing the mission. They descend to the river Styx where after the djinn throws the gold coin into the river, Charon, the ferryman, carries them across his river. Eo tells that as a woman she cannot enter Medusa's lair before warning them not to look the gorgon in the eye as they would turn to stone, a curse put on Medusa by Athena after she was raped by Poseidon. When they arrive at Medusa's lair, the creature starts to attack them and almost plunging Perseus to death. All the men are killed off by the cunning and evasive Medusa, including turning Draco into a stone and Jin explodes after being captured. Perseus uses the underside of his shield to see her with his back turned, finally manages to lop the Gorgon's head off. Perseus' victorious emergence from Medusa's lair is cut short when Eo is brutally stabbed by Kalibos. Perseus and Kalibos fight ending the battle after Perseus picks up the Olympian sword to slay his foe. Kalibos, having recovered his sanity at the point of death, warns Perseus not become like the gods, before plunging to his death over a cliff. Eo urges Perseus to return to Argos to save the princess but he waits until she dies as he cannot leave someone who had watched over him his whole life at her point of death. She dies and her essence ascends. Moment later, a black pegasus arrives and takes Perseus to Argos. Meanwhile, at Olympus, the eclipse is almost near and at Hades' prodding, Zeus orders the Kraken to be released. As the Kraken approaches, Procopian leads a crowd who break in and abduct Andromeda in order to offering her as sacrifice to Hades, 
biting her at a cliff edge as the city falls. On Olympus, Hades finally pounces on Zeus, revealing that he is feeding off the people's fear and has gained the power he needs to overthrow Zeus. In turn, Zeus brilliantly reveals that Perseus is on his way to save the day in Argos. Hades returns to Argos and, with his furies, he intercepts Perseus and steals the Gorgon's head. After a maddening chase around the falling city, Perseus reclaims the head and uses it to turn the crick into stone, stopping it right before it takes the princess. Procbian tries to kill Perseus with a spear but Cepheus stops him, dying as he takes the full brunt of the spear himself. The stone kraken crumbles, killing Procopin with its rubble and plunging Andromeda into the sea. Hades appears and tries to take Perseus down, but the demigod with his sword enhanced by Zeus' lightning, stabs Hades and banishes the god into the depths of the sea. After this, Perseus dives into the sea and rescues the princess. When they come to at the beach, the princess requests that Perseus becomes king of Argos, but he turns her down before riding off with the Pegasus. In the final scene, Zeus appears to Perseus and thanks him for his efforts. They acknowledge that Hades is only injured and are wary of his return. Zeus offers him a place on Olympus once more but the demigod turns him down. Seeing he cannot convince his son to follow him, he leaves his son with one final gift, a revived Dio. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get notice when a new video is uploaded.